Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to another episode of Nerd Up. This week I got Dalton Anthony. Yo. Lisa Gray. I live. Lindsay Wolfgang. Hello. And I'm your host, <laughs> Jesse Kimball. Yeah, Dalton, or we got the cur- the curse, the corpse of Asa Gray. I don't, I don't live well. At the end of the table. I'm alive. We drug him out here uh, with all the, the flu and his leaky orifices. Uh, yeah, get over the flu and then just like it's, you know, the, the comics on Reddit where it's like uh, the guy that's usually happy, but then it's something beats him up and it's like the bigger thing and it's like high school. And then yeah. there's the bigger guy and it's college. And then mm-hmm. the bigger guys like real world, like real stuff world. like that. It's just like, okay, flu just wrecked me. But then behind him with a baseball bat's just allergies. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the biggest guy going to be, I wonder? I don't know, but he needs to get here soon. <laughs> We're not at just all. No. Just get it over with. Sweet lady death. <laughs> there's a lot of really worst like illnesses out there, Asa. There's they no can b- take me. <laughs> <laughs> there's no bigger guy. It was allergies. <laughs> that was the biggest one. Lindsay, you look upset about something. She you? didn't put a card in the right place. I have a variant, so now I have to. How many shift pages everything. you got to move? I mean, it's just one. Oh, but okay. it's I was waiting for you to like <sighs> six. <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, now, now to, to actual to nerd stuff here. Stranger Things season three got a trailer. Yay. Uh, we got a, like some actual details looks about what the season's going to be about, other than just Fourth of July. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm I'm down. I'm really excited about it. I still haven't seen the second season all the way through. It's, I think I because I, I I really enjoyed he's taking his time. Well, and it's I really enjoyed the first season. Mm. Um, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as everybody else seems to have, but it was good. I loved it. Uh, the second season, uh, we started it, and just the whole like Will with PTSD thing was kind of hard to get through initially. So we just kind of took a break from that, and I just never went back to finish it it's fair and the second season is significantly weaker than the first in my opinion mm. i know there's like the, there's apparently like there's one super controversial episode that everybody seems yeah. to have hated like though it's it's i think it's it's one way or the other like it's been so long i've forgotten they loved it or they hated it mm-hmm. or I, I know it was like the people who liked it they or they the people who didn't like it like they still thought it was a good episode it just shouldn't have happened like when it happened yeah. It's like episode six ends on a cliffhanger, then episode seven, instead of resolving the that, just was like, hey, we're going to go do and do another now. thing. Yeah. 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 No, I, I remember the episode pretty clearly. And yeah, I think that because that was kind of like my feelings towards it. I didn't hate the episode, but at the same time, I was like, oh, this could have happened at a different time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, there were a lot of people that just outright hated everything about that episode. Huh. But either way, you know, this one looks like it's going to be. Uh, a little bit more fun like it doesn't look like we're going to be uh, doing that much stuff with the upside down uh, which I'm glad about I, it did at least the like the first two thirds of the trailer very much seemed to be grounded in like just the, the lives but then the like last third went with the smash cuts of monsters and, one and giant like monster thing, craziness yeah. yeah and I, I mean it, it's probably co- all coming from the upside down again but I think but at least they're not in the upside down like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just I'm tired of the upside down. I want to move to something else that's stranger. You tired right. of the blood rush into your head? See, because that's what I kind of <laughs> thought it was going to end up being. Is <laughs> it was like, okay, season one's in this thing of the upside down, and then season two's going to be, oh, well, now here's this other supernatural entity thing that's coming. Because like the only thing I really care about at the upside down at this point, like it would have made it would I would have liked season two a lot more if they spent more time with the upside down talking about why. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown has powers. I cannot remember the name of her character in the show. They gave them to the government gave her gave them to her, didn't they? But yeah, didn't they like? Aren't they based in the Upside Down? Oh yeah, they like harnessed energy from the Upside Down or, or something. Some like nonsense that. like that. Like, like I, I want to know more information about that. I got gotcha. you because like yeah, we did. I think season two gave a little bit more information if I remember right, but it still didn't give us like everything. Yeah, that I couldn't tell you because like uh, I said, I only saw like two episodes of the first uh, the second season. But yeah, like the the more I'm thinking about it, like there I'm pretty positive there was an episode that gave us some more info about it, but it's still just not you know, it's not like all the information that I want. Like that's all I really want about the upside down is where that stuff came from. Mm-hmm. Uh but now that I'm thinking about it, it may not have come from the upside down. I, I clearly I need to rewatch the first two seasons. Mm-hmm. Which you can do in preparation for season three. Yeah. Coming out July fourth. I was gonna say you got plenty of time to do it. Uh also it wasn't on the like rundown of the list, mm-hmm. but on the same day that so July 4th of this year, season three is coming out for the season. There's also a game coming out. That was part of the Nindies really? event that was this week. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, I completely forgot to watch the Nindy's video. The only thing I caught from it was the uh, thing. There was that, and then the Cuphead. Like, yeah, I mean, there was. For, there wasn't a whole lot that interested me personally. If you were a fan of, you know, like Nintendo and Independence, like there was some other stuff that was kind of cool. Like it's worth checking out, but nothing. Yeah, there wasn't some anything like super earth shattering coming from it. Because with the indie games, I always wait for there to be like you know a lot of people build a whole lot of hype around it, like I did with Hollow Knight and Celeste, Fury, mm -hmm. uh, those kind of games, and then a lot of hype gets built up, and then I go, okay, I'll check it out. Oh, there's when we talk about Cuphead, there's one game that I do want to mention, but I have to find out what it's called. Fair enough, because uh, yeah, folks, with a spoiler alert, we're getting to Cuphead later. But yeah, that is. But the, uh, it's come. It's launching the same day as the TV show. Gotcha. That's cool. And I don't know if it's. I don't think it's only on Switch, but it's definitely on Switch. It's almost certainly on Steam as well. That seems yeah. to be the trend. Uh, I mean, it might be on some other systems, but either way. Uh, so we got a uh, new Toy Story Four trailer. I <laughs> so close to tears already. It's. Uh, it looks like it's going to be another emotional roller coaster. Yeah. I am at least now not concerned that it's going to be just garbage. Yeah. That's oh, well, I don't think this is a movie franchise that I don't think they would put out garbage. Yes, but when three wrapped up so nicely as it did. Just a beautiful little bow. Yeah, like An unnecessary movie versus a garbage movie, though, would be. Yeah, because like it's one of those, like, I don't feel like they're like, oh, we need to make money on this Toy Story brand. I think it is, we have another story we want to tell. And yeah, like that's that's what I want. Like I don't want them to go out to the you know the meme with the the cow that's all skinny and like <laughs> dehydrated, <laughs> and, and you just got yeah Disney out there with the bucket like ready to go. Uh, like I don't I don't want that. Like I want them to you know think about it. Like do we have another story we can tell with these characters? And if so, by all means, tell it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just don't you know. Yeah. The they did. Um, let and, it retire with grace. Yeah. yeah uh, they did the Toys R Us World, or not Toys R Us. It was like a Toys, Toys R Us story. Toy Story World. They did Toy Story World in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. And it was a, like so half the times in those games, they'll like just kind of rehash a movie. But with Toy Story, they did like their own like story with it. And they like had to go to like a toy store and stuff like that. It was really well done, even though some of the voice acting was not fantastic. I saw one of the stills from it where it's like, why isn't that toy moving? Well, he just doesn't know yet. <laughs> yeah and it's just like oh that's actually kind of touching yeah <laughs> like, that's, that's kind of sweet yeah and it's uh, i but, it's i'm happy that i got that in january and now i'll have toy story 4 it, soon i'm also not looking forward to uh crying like, in a theater well i mean i i do that with almost every pixar movie these days but uh no the 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 herd of slappies yeah because that was uh, my so thing is it was there, like there there's already theories out on it. So every Toy Story movie has a creepy toy, but they're never actually bad. Right. Yeah, so oh, I no, mean, this one. All of Sid's toys. And that was the first one. And since they're ventriloquist dummies, they can't talk unless they've got somebody else, which just adds into. That'd be kind of creepy. Yeah, because, I mean, but they look uncannily like sna uh, oh, Slappy yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah. No, Falls. totally. Yes. Um, no, yeah, it's one of those things where I, I genuinely think that they are going to make Bo. Is going to turn yeah, out to be the bad guy. The, I'm, I'm confident. I've watched yeah. like because just the way so that many trailer. videos about it already. Because the tra the trailer where she's talking, where he like Woody kind of realizes, no, you don't have to be dedicated to just one kid. Mm -hmm. You could, you know, imagine playing with all of these kids like all the time, always. It's like I don't know. Pixar needs to be tackling the polygamy <laughs> <laughs> like angle here, but it does sound but, like they at least have Annie Potts back they to do her voice, which is awesome. And, hey. I mean, and it looks. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like the the animation just keeps getting better and better, which it's Pixar, so that's not yeah. surprising at all. I was a little upset we didn't get any more Key and Peel bits. I out know, of this right? One. It's Honestly, okay. I'll wait for Ducky and Bunny. I'm yeah. I'm okay with it because it's it's just one of those things where it's like I don't want to get everything because I feel exactly. like they're not going to be major characters. So yeah. I don't. I feel like if we get any more, that's going to be all of yeah their that's stuff. Fair. Entirely fair. could be so. All right, uh, the Batman. Uh, the the upcoming I guess Matt Reeves is that mm -hmm. uh, yeah uh, the Matt Reeves Batman's rumored to be set in the nineties mm -hmm. so I guess they're not going to reboot the storyline of you know how long Batman's been Batman they're just going to give us a prequel story set like way back when which is easier to do especially until they figure out how they want to handle the bigger worlds of DC right. timeline they can just go and yeah like tell did, yeah. which did you see that the uh, Penguin is apparently going to be the 
I did read that somewhere. They want they want Penguin yeah. to be the. I think I had seen that, but I hadn't seen where it was going to be official. Okay. That Penguin I, oh yeah, I don't think villain. it's been official yet, but yeah. that's where they're. That's where they're leaning. It. Yeah, which uh, is for me is kind of a bummer. Which because uh, Penguin's a cool villain, and especially like the the re the retelling they've done of his character on Gotham has yeah. been like consistently like the one good thing about Gotham. Was Robin? Uh, Except I imagine Taylor. that character's probably dead at this point. I don't think he is. I mean, he might be. Most of my Gotham knowledge at this point comes from uh, Daniel O'Brien on Cracked mm. doing these tweet rundowns of episodes because uh, one of the other people from After Hours refuses to watch Gotham, so he's just like, "Hey, Soren, look, uh, now James Gordon and billionaire Bruce Boy are teaming up to take on the Riddler." <laughs> and he's just doing it. And it's like reading those makes me want to like. It actually makes me curious of like, is it this terrible? It's pretty bad. Uh, like most of the, like mostly for me, like I end up bored. Mm-hmm. Like it's not. I don't know. Yeah, I, I could we could we could do a whole lot of information about that, but I'm not gonna bother with not it. Worth like there's, it. it's not worth unpacking. Um, but either way, yeah, rumor to be said in the '90s, which like I really wish they just rebooted like they're going to do with Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Speaking of James Gunn, Suicide Squad, like further confirmation, like for the last time, I guess this will not be Suicide Squad two. This is, this is a hard reboot. Hard. And the working title is The Suicide Squad. Really? Uh, amazing. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I was wondering how they, like, what they were, like, if they were going to subtitle it or what they were going to do. Uh, no, at a the. Because, uh, I mean, it's going to be better than the first one. Like, it's got to be. It, it st- I still you, haven't watched it. I feel like it physically cannot be worse. No, yeah, the, you cannot trip over that bar. Like, so, it's it's far too low. I think it was a dorkly thing where it was like, oh, Suicide Squad is going to be a complete reboot is what the headline actually says. But what it should say is Warner Brothers nukes entire franchise to get rid of Jared Leto. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the, war, uh, the WB CEO stepped down recently. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember his name. It's fine. But, yeah, no, I had seen that, and I actually meant to put that in the show notes, but I completely forgot about it. Uh, but either way, yeah, James Gunn Suicide Squad, total reboot. Like, not going to be Suicide Squad 2. Like, some of the listeners are going to be recast. Uh, obviously, Margot Robbie is almost certainly sticking around as Harley Quinn. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, total reboot. Like, the last movie is officially no longer part of the world's DC universe, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know how they're going to... I don't know if how they're going to spin that. it will that. be, or, yeah, that's going to be a weird one, unless they're on another Earth or something. Because, yeah, like, that had Batfleck. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But this one might have Idris Elba. It might. Give that me. would be so cool. And yes, please. Give me. Yes, please. Um, but anyway, Robert Rodriguez, the uh, director of Alita Battle Angel, uh, is going to write and direct a superhero film for Netflix called We Can Be Heroes. It sounds like a children's book. A little bit. Uh, I don't know. Like, we don't have any other information other than that. But I really, really, really liked Alita Battle Angel. I did, too. It was a good movie. They stayed pretty true to the original source material. Which is good. I haven't read any. Like, I now want to read the source material because I've, I did enjoy that I've so much. I watched the original, like, anime, but mm-hmm. I've only seen bits and pieces of the manga. But as far as, like, from that three-episode OVA, it was pretty spot-on look storyline all that stuff nice because i know whenever we were in uh paducah when we went to the fye there Mm -hmm. they had uh well they had the pops but they also had shannon found a uh hardcover collection oh yeah uh that was like the entire series like uh, up or no it was just volume one because they had like other volumes but they didn't have volume two Mm -hmm. and apparently it's a, a large series at this point but just the first volume hardcover at FYE uh-huh. was like ninety dollars. Yeah, um, I think Steven sent me a link on Amazon for like the whole box set thing. It was like two hundred or something. I'm like, Jimbo no, thank you. And that's Christmas. for the manga. Yes. Okay. I mean, uh, granted, like that's probably a lot more than you know. Manga <coughs> reader. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it would probably show up cheaper, like you know, per book. Yeah. Uh, like at a reasonable or price. Or what I do now with my skip beat volumes, I just look for a used copy in excellent condition. Right, which <laughs> you find all over Amazon the place. Amazon doesn't bend the stupid book in the mail. Their shipping service. Like Amazon's shipping is awful. Mm-hmm. Like uh, atrocious. Yep. I was on a good like route with it until my last one where the book was like sandwiched. Did I tell you mm-hmm. mine? With the perfect do not bend sticker uh, just like folded right <laughs> there. No. Uh, I bought an action figure. 
which like I open them so it's not a big deal. They sent me one. The card was torn, and on the back of it oh, yeah. was a sticky note that said "damaged." <laughs> 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 I do remember that. But it's I, new in box. Oh, yeah. It sure was, Jesse. <laughs> Just you saying Amazon a bent book. I'm like, oh, let me. And like, I'm okay with it being torn like it happens. It, was an yeah. expo- it wasn't a box. It was an exposed card. But it was just like, you put damaged on it and then sent it out. I don't know if it was from Amazon, but Allie found me my Gizmo Duck pop at Christmas time. Uh-huh. And that box was just like now, completely see, destroyed. I've only bought pops from Amazon like a handful of times. And I don't know t- if they bought it from there or not. Yeah, so. but like anytime I buy a pop from Amazon, it's relatively in good shape. Yeah, like the the Amiibos that I bought from Amazon were fine. Yeah. Uh, like whenever I found one retail there, I managed to get one. Uh, but like the um, GameStop, Amiibos from GameStop were always bent to crap. Like anytime I got some shit from there, but no, like Amazon also shipped me uh, that controller I bought, the GameCube one. They mm-hmm. sent it to me in like a clear plastic, thin like uh, enclosure, no like padding or bubble wrap or anything, and they put that inside a padded envelope. Yup, mm-hmm. like one of the big like Manila envelopes with a little bit of padding to it. That's how they shipped me that controller. The controller is not a cheap controller. Uh, I was very upset about that. I bought wrestling gear from the UK, and it was sh- sent in something like that. And I was like, are you serious? I mean, at least that's... Like, like, it's fabric, so it's not as big, but I'm just like... Right. I paid, like, $20 in shipping. You couldn't have put it in a small box? <laughs> right. Give me a box, please. Uh, no, it's like whenever I buy a jersey, you know, you spend over $100 in that, and they come in, yeah. like, a plastic baggie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on to actual news. Uh, Bill and Ted. Yay! We got oh. we got a, a fun little video. Uh, Keanu Reeves and um, Lindsay, help me out. I don't remember his name. Oh God, someone Alex please. Winters. Lindsay watched Bill Is and Ted, Ted as a kid because she had yeah. a crush on Keanu. Okay. So you know what's his name? I'm ninety percent sure it's Alex hmm. Winters. No, no, no. I thought I heard her say Keanu, and I was yeah. like, Keanu. Kind of yeah, Keanu. Shut up. Well, I'm even though I'm not gonna, I'm now withdrawing my sentence after the Keanu part I just did. <laughs> Keanu. Yeah, you you really don't get to <laughs> judge anyone yeah. on that stuff. And yeah, it's how Ale- long it's have you Alex known Winter. me? I Alex mispronounce Winter. Okay. everything. Yeah, I don't know why. Like my brain completely. Like even you saying it was you not have like respect for the franchise that you and the rest of humanity <laughs> honestly rightfully should. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe it's just a Keanu thing. Because <laughs> I am overly got, defensive over speed. Because in fairness. We, we got the we got the Bill and Ted announcement, mm-hmm. which finally. Yeah, I know. right? Yeah. We have been trying to get this movie made. And yeah, I said we have been trying <laughs> to get this movie made for years. years. Now. And it, I'm a, a little I'm just a, like Keanu seemed excited and I uh-huh. feel like he wouldn't do it if he wasn't happy with it. Yeah. But the fact that they're filming it this summer uh-huh. and it's coming out next year. Uh huh. That gives me a little bit of pause, but at the same time, don't care. Wild Stallions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm super on board. Like, if there's two movies I rented more than anything as a child, it was the Bill and Ted movies. I, I kind of hate myself for how long it took me to finally watch the Bill and Ted movies. And I think it was eventually the, uh, it was After Hours on Cracked. Mm. How many times can I bring that up today? Uh, that this finally for free, Cracked. It's, well, not anymore. Because all those people are fired. Oh, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> you done goofed, cracked. Uh, but they, uh, they, I finally like went and watched them. I was like, oh, that, okay. So the first movie is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it and is. it's like, yeah. oh, but then. Uh, Bogus Journey is even better. I'm somehow. pretty sure I rented Bogus Journey more than the <clears throat> other because there was a gas station not even half a mile down the road for me. I would ride my bike down there to rent movies because they had like a tiny movie section and they had that one. And if they didn't have anything else I wanted, that's what I rented. <laughs> I haven't watched the second one in a really long time because I wa- when I was a kid, something about the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> just well, it wasn't the Energizer freaked Bunny. Freaked me out. It wasn't the Energizer Bunny. It was the Easter Bunny. That was it. Either way, when I was a kid and watched that, like it weirdly freaked me out, and for some reason, like I just haven't gone back to watch it since then. No, that their their own personal hells were like legitimately creepy. Mm -hmm. Like Bill's grandma freaked me out. Yeah, that's fair (laughs) too. All the drool Uh, and laugh. Just death cheating. (laughs) <laughs> the first one though i have rewatched uh, several times mm-hmm. uh it, like even in uh-huh. the past decade like i love the first movie a whole lot i just need to watch the second one again excuse me do you know when the mongols ruled china <laughs> <laughs> 
Bill and Ted versus uh, Lewis and Clark. Also, really <laughs> underrated epic rap battle history. I know it's totally unrelated, but it makes me... Spoiler alert, you totally kill yourself, dude. <laughs> Come on, dude, it's so... <laughs> dude, I love the epic rap battles of history. That's good stuff. That's coming back soon, too. Yeah, it Yay. is. Hope it's better uh, than that teaser one they gave us. Well, no, they gave us the first episode, and it wasn't great. Yeah, so hope that they hopefully just, the rest of the season they, they knocks out of the, the park. Rust. Yeah. Uh, cause yeah, no, I, I love epic rap battles. Like I was so excited when I found out like Ace is the only other person I've ever met that loves epic rap battles of history. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a fan. I like you never like talk about ones. it. It's on YouTube. That should just be a given. I actually thought it was weird that you're not like, you don't get as hype about that stuff as me and Asa does, especially with how much time you spend <laughs> on YouTube. It's defunct land has been taking a lot of my time recently. Literally everything, you know what but like good time. things. Go back and watch, uh, Bill and Ted, Ted. <laughs> and then uh, Excellent Adventure. I and will then lend to them. No, I don't even have to lend them to you. They're on like three streaming services right I'm, now. I will say too, I am willing. I will put money down now that they're going to do a tribute to George Carlin, and it's going to make I me cry. I want them to. Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh huh. It's going to happen. Yeah. The only uh, pro- the only part of this film I am not a hundred percent sold on is that it's them and their daughters. Don't doing care. It. Like I that. Did. That's. I'm like, no, just them. I don't need their children. Just them. <laughs> it makes sense though, because now, because I am very curious to see how those characters aged. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Same. Not Same. a day. That would be horrible. I mean, Keanu Reeves <laughs> hasn't aged in like just, 30 years. He's just got a little bit of uh, the salt and pepper in his uh-huh. beard now. Would you like for them to reference John Wick at some point? Uh, no, because that universe is very pure. There doesn't need to be a crossover. <laughs> Which, speaking of, what if, John Wick 3 got a trailer again this week. What if and, it's... Oh, boy. What yeah, if, I know they got a trailer. Yeah. Oh, it's... So, hmm. Okay, yeah. here we go. He's just throwing knives into a mother... Like, just... <laughs> just it's so... Uh, the one... Okay, so we get a little bit more Halle Berry. She just hates John Wick, so it's cool. Whatever they're gonna probably like fight, fight. Um, and then have sex. The problem, my the 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 one thing that I am now not excited for has fin- something has finally happened. I can't remember what else he was in because he completely took me out of that movie or show. No, it was Agents of Shield because he was in Agents of Shield, but it's the dude who was the new um, Iron Chef. Host oh yeah! That I'm like, why are you in a thing that's not Iron Chef? Ah, oh. because uh, he played a. Uh, he was the nephew of the original, like, whatever the ruler of Iron Chef is. Yeah, the guy yeah. who would just, like his job was to look intense and go cabbage. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah. whatever the secret ingredient. Yeah, no, of the I week totally was. know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and so I know he, the the character he played because my boss uh, is a big fan of Agents of Shield, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Where do I know this guy from?" And then yeah, he told me Iron Chef. I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." Iron Chef America specifically. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so he apparently has a role in this movie, and it's quite sizable because he talks in the trailer. Oh no. Yeah. So that's gonna just Aww. break you, break your immersion. It really yeah. is. But at the same time, all the people, the six people on the motorcycles draw katanas, and I'm right back in. <laughs> yes. Uh. So yeah, Bill and Ted coming summer 2020. I mm-hmm. cannot believe it's coming out that quick. John Wick uh, three coming out sooner. Yeah. I mean, true. it could also just be the case that they've got the script all locked in, and all they have left to do is film. Yeah, and I mean, it it's not I- gonna have like. You shouldn't have to have any like crazy special effects and to man, it. Like, there'll be, I mean, you'll have the time travel stuff, but it's not like the entire thing is going to be CG'd like a Star Wars film. They but could it, also replicate those like special effects from the 80s now uh-huh. real easy. And I also just want to point out for anyone who hasn't really gotten this yet. If you if you want to know how amazing this movie is, it's one of my all time favorites. And it's solely about time travel. <laughs> exactly. Let that sink in for a minute. Yep. That accurate. Yep. <laughs> I really want the robot Bill and Ted's to be in their garages. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> like just like sitting they, in they the have corner. To make a return. I, need, I need to go I need to watch these movies tonight. I was going to start I remember my MCU way back when but... Death is supposed to like at least have a cameo. So, mm, that what would if, be necessary. What if John Wick is their favorite movie series? That would be hilarious. It wouldn't be because it's too violent. Yeah, I don't understand. You're, you're, you're forcing something that just doesn't need to happen. So just let it go. Move on. You are not ruining my day. But it could be referenced. It's not. It's not. So Maybe supernatural. Maybe they'll reference one of Alex Winter's franchises. Uh, supernatural. Fi- <laughs> are coming to an end. Ten seasons too late. 
Aww. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> is it 15? Aww. Yes, season 15 will but, be the final season of Supernatural. But if they ended it 10 seasons earlier, we wouldn't have got the Scooby-Doo crossover. Oh, uh, and I, I keep meaning to watch that because apparently it was the Scooby-Doo great. crossover was fantastic. It was so great. Uh, but, like, the Scooby-Doo crossover is not worth... 10 seasons of like nonsense that we've got i've watched all of it but the last season that's been out so i have no room to talk and yes it just keeps getting more and more ridiculous which some people seem to really like like it still has its fans and i know i still like sam and dean and crowley and castiel i know a sizable chunk of those fans are just because they're alive again shipping sam and dean but Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't Cass say that. Oh. I just said I like Castiel. Well, <laughs> I was about to say, like, he's died like three times. Surely he's dead. Yeah, I mean, he, so is Crowley. So, so is Sam, Sam and Dean. Dean. Yeah. That's Literally, true. they kill everyone, except the only one that seems to have stuck is it's Bobby. Bobby. Because you. Mm-hmm. Bobby sort of came back once. As a ghost? Yeah. Well, they did have their <laughs> their parallel world, Bobby. I'm not yeah. a huge fan of feeling things, and they that also show had does a, that more than I'd care to admit. They also have Afterlife Bobby when they, they found him in his little heaven. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking like brought back and like now you're just part of the show again instead of like, no, I understand hey, what you're let's saying. make this guy cry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm right there with Which you. Be- every, every time it's a Bobby episode, mm-hmm. I'm right Bobby. there. Bobby was so good. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's that's finally ending. Um, so says CW this time, not the showrunners mm-hmm. that uh, tried to end it two seasons ago. That CW then reanimated the corpse of. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Speaking they, of that cow. I was about to say, they went out and found that cow. <laughs> <laughs> they got the bucket. Um, anyway, uh, the next portion of our podcast brought to you by our wonderful friends in Perryville, Missouri at Villainous Grounds. Best comic shop in the state. Guaranteed. I don't know what the what you get if you don't like it, but I don't really care because you will. Yes. Um, I need to go there tomorrow. I, went. I need to go and pick up my stuff. Actually, I might go after Wednesday. Or no, we'll probably just stop up there on the way to Kansas City. There you go. When are you Friday. leaving for that? I don't know yet. Word. <laughs> that's next week. I keep forgetting that's next week. Yeah. Um, Which, you know, heads up, won't be here for the show. I might not Sunday. be either. That's fair. I forget. Yeah, I <laughs> we'll see that how it goes. There'll <laughs> be a podcast, just me. <laughs> So anyway, um, do we want the Dalton Anthony and Anthony hour? We're taking the soundboard. <laughs> we'll, do a, we'll do a show up there. <laughs> it'll be we'll me and Shannon. What will happen is I'll record it on my phone and be like, Shannon, put music to it. Call it a day. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just get up there and get uh, we get Kevin. Uh, we we'll get Audra involved because why not? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't like this one. Planet, this is a Planet Comic Con special. That's right. Now the last time we tried to do that, it did not work very well at all. We tried to do it a. Uh, a uh, podcast from RTX in our hotel room, and that that was a nightmare. We'll see how Cape Comic Con goes. Well, that's that might also be a nightmare. Uh, more on that eventually. Not today though. Uh, so, Absolute Carnage. It's the event that uh, was teased a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's actually going to be an event involving. Uh, it'll have I think six issues by itself, and uh, it'll also involve uh, Venom and Amazing Spider Man. So uh, it's actually going to be written by Donny Cates with art by Ryan Stegman. So something that I did not care at all about, I now will almost certainly buy all of. Yes, <laughs> and read all of. Yeah. Cause are, Don- you, are you currently picking up either Venom or Spider-Man? Or Amazing both? Spider-Man, yes. Uh, Venom I am reading, but okay. I'm really, really far behind like on it. Marvel now? Marvel now, yeah. Okay. Uh, just not like grabbing it from. Uh, you're, not keeping you know, up, I, you're not actively keeping up with it, right? Gotcha. Because uh, I, I, I buy too many comic books as it is. I've cut down. I'm still buying too many comic mm-hmm. books. Um, but anyway, I I, get, I also keep forgetting that I just bought a, I I spent a lot on uh, a lot yesterday in comic books, and I just remembered that it was a week and a half's worth of comic or two three weeks because yeah. we, didn't we didn't go, go last up. Friday. Uh, and a, a Wednesday has happened since then. I had a lot to go through last time I was up there. I believe I that. still have at least half of it up there. See, that's why I have like, my four I'll weeks. I'll take this for Uh-oh. now. Yeah. See, my, my two weeks, like I'll, I'll skip two weeks, and it's just like, here's eight comic books. And I'm like, thank you. And then it's like, oh, there's variants. So really it's like six. <laughs> yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. That's going to be a hard, so a sobering experience on the way up to – Planet Comic Con. I can't buy anything there now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I I fully intend on not. Sp- I'm mostly going to spend money on food. Yeah, which is fair. Kansas City barbecue. 
Mm-hmm. That's I'm good coming. stuff. I'm coming for you. There's a lot. There are a lot of plays in Kansas City that are real good. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Absolute Carnage is gonna be the name of the events. Donnie Cates, uh, Ryan Stegman, and that's uh, oh god. And it's gonna be insane because like, have they? <clears throat> I know he kind of retooled the symbiotes origin story. Yes. Uh, has he touched on Carnage at all, or is this? Do you think that's what this is gonna end up being? Probably. I think that's what this is gonna end up being because I don't think he's messed with Carnage even a little bit. Okay. Uh, because. The, the last time we saw Carnage and anything Venom related was in the Venom Inc. books. They basically recruited Carnage because, uh, you know, they were grabbing all the symbiotes and everything to deal with the parasite. Mm-hmm. And something about Carnage uh, just Killed was a real weakness against the parasites. Like they couldn't, th- <laughs> right? They couldn't take over Carnage at mm-hmm. all. So Carnage was just ripping them apart. Uh, so basically, they they went and grabbed him. Like, hey, we got some killing for you to do. And, oh boy! Uh, yeah, oh boy! Here I go killing again. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he just you know, and, and the way Carnage do started murdering everything. Uh, Deadpool was also a weakness to the parasite. Of course. Yeah, because uh, he couldn't. Yeah, Venom Inc was kind of dumb, or not Venom Inc. Uh, Venom Verse mm-hmm. was kind of dumb. What? Uh, yeah, I like as much as I love Venom and all the ridiculousness there. Even I was like, all right, this is kind of. Uh, a little I much. I loved the art because seeing all these venomized heroes was super cool. But like the story itself was eh. Especially because Deadpool ended up being the one to save the day because his multiple personality he's too he's too wacky. He's too many will, people to be able to The lock Parasite in the couldn't yeah, the Parasite couldn't control him because he's just too zany. I did like Back in Black though, whenever they did that like miniseries. That was really cool. Unrelated entirely to Venom. Well, yeah, no, but I'm just saying like the way they did that was neat. I like that. Yeah, no, like I that, that Deadpool Venom like that Deadpool Venom thing, awesome. I can't attest to Venomverse, but I'm willing to say it was a lot like Harley Quinn at the end of Suicide Squad, where it's just like, why is that what beat it? <laughs> uh, and it looks like it's coming in August uh, is when that event's going to start up. So we got a little bit of time for that. Uh, so I saw a couple of sources saying summer, and like I, a few of them saying August. So mm-hmm. at the very least, Which August summer is still technically summer. Yeah, Indo summer, mm-hmm. uh, but definitely still hot, especially here. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. uh, Infinity Warps is returning as Secret Warps coming in July. Uh, it's going to be a six issue miniseries written by Al Ewing. Uh, he was the guy that did uh, Immortal Hulk, and apparently that turned okay. out really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people are really excited about Al did, Ewing writing these. Have they announced the roster for what it's going to be? Uh, it's the same like group of that we've already gotten, oh, Arachnite, uh, Weapon Hex, and all of them. That's a little bit of a uh, Al Ewing wrote the um, the Thor Iron Man, the Iron... Iron Hammer. Iron Hammer, was that what it was called? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the he was the one that wrote the uh, the Iron Hammer story, and apparently that was the best of them. Uh, I own them. I haven't read any of them because I own I'm a some of them. Person. I think I ended up missing a couple, but I bought I bought all the ones that I wanted, like both issues of Iron Hammer, uh, the Weapon Hex ones that I wanted. Yeah, and I think I got all the one like same thing. Like I got the ones that I really cared about, but I also just ended up wanting to get the rest of them because I Fair have enough. a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's that collector mentality. Uh, but yeah, it'll be Secret Warps coming in July. And it's going to be six different annuals, and uh, yeah, Al Ewing is doing like is writing all of them, but it's going to have different artists for each of them. So see how that goes. Um, Jonathan Hickman's back at Marvel, which awesome. What did Hickman do again? Hit me a with it. bunch of stuff. Because mm-hmm. uh, I'm like, thinking I have one in my head that I think it is, but I don't know. He did Secret Wars most recently, like okay. with Marvel anyway. Did he do Marvel Zombies or was that somebody else? Uh, I don't know, honestly. He may have. Oh, that, that that's the name that I'm thinking about. Cause, and only only because I was thinking of Marvel Zombies when you were talking about the Venomized uh, yeah, characters. I, mean, I was like the, zombie, the like, zombie characters were also awesome looking, but that yeah. story was booty. You know, I mean, Hickman, like looking up Hickman's credits would be like looking up Tara Strong's credits like he's done fair it for three hours yeah. and oh, i mean okay. he's he's like everything that he does is really high quality stuff he does he's been doing a lot of work for dc lately uh because he hasn't done anything for marvel since secret wars but he's coming back to marvel now to do uh because he's been gone for a while yeah he uh, like like i said secret wars the last thing he did apparently marvel zombies was done by robert kirkman sean phillips and arthur sudium neat mm, never mind it was the men at the end of it that threw me off robert kirkman oh that yeah that that uh, makes sense and is really cool i didn't know that i didn't either um but either way yeah he's coming back for a couple of x-men books it's going to be uh two sets of six issue miniseries uh the house of x with art by pepe Larraz and uh powers of x with uh art by rb silva and apparently this is going to be a big event that's uh, I'm assuming it has something to do with 
some reworking they're going to do since they have to undo all of the stuff they did to the X-Men while Disney didn't own X-Men. Uh, so, yeah, who, who knows what's going to happen. Like, it's... I just need them to, like, pick something with the X-Men and stick with it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Please. and comic books? <sighs> I know. Yeah. I know. They're slowly but surely just bringing everyone back to life. Like, they, they made it a huge deal that Wolverine's coming back to life. Cyclops came back to life in an issue, and now he's a part of a team. Uh, like, well, here's the thing. They, they all need back- to... Go ahead, sorry. They need to all be back on the table, so whenever they have the next event, they can kill, like, four of them. Well, I mean, like, Jean Grey's back. Like, adult Jean Grey is back. Oh, like, really? But it's separate, because uh, isn't young Jean Grey still here? Young Jean... I think all of the young mutants got sent back. Oh, okay, wow. I think that finally happened. I've been very off of that, so... Uh, yeah, I haven't read X-Men in a while now. They brought back... Oh, no, never... Okay, never mind. Professor X was the one that I remember you talking about, but yeah. they did, but they didn't, but... Yeah, no, like, that was... Like, that... They, they swerved me on that one. I thought it was Xavier came back, mm-hmm. uh, and he kind of well, took over Phantom X's body. They also kind of told you it was going to be Xavier coming back, so... Yeah, uh, but, I mean, like, they, they swerved me in a way where I wasn't expecting to be swerved. Uh, like it was, it, it, it actually was a good twist. Like that was some, mm-hmm. it was Charles soul that wrote that whole book. And I, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit, but either way, yeah, I don't think Xavier's technically back, but he was pictured in some of the uh, promotional artwork for this. Okay. So Xavier might be coming back. Um, yeah, basically all the, the, the big league, uh, the ones X-Men, people care about. Yeah. Jubilee's back to being a mutant. And Jubilee. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon somewhere just got real angry. He's can, not sure why. Can somebody? Um, uh, I'm sure, he's probably real angry in general where he is right now. Oh, oh, uh oh. He got dragged to a dinner he didn't want to go to. <laughs> uh, well, anyway. Uh, by the way, yeah, my body's like, just making sounds, Dalton. I'm sorry, I'm dying. <laughs> it was just a well-timed <laughs> sound of that. I was like, <laughs> no, it's just like it's just. Hmm. Something's yeah. escaping. Uh, so either way, yeah, I don't, we, I don't know. We don't have any information other than that about what this is going to be. Mm-hmm. This is going to be the next big X-Men event. Uh, and like th- un- the third big event coming up in Marvel, War of the Realms, uh, is coming up pretty soon. Uh, they're going to do a new Valkyrie ongoing uh, after the fallout from that. Apparently Valkyrie is going to play a pretty big role in it. And she's going to get her own uh, ongoing book, uh, co-written by Jason Ehring and Al Ewing again. Uh, so I imagine Jason Aaron is going to drop off the book pretty quick and then Al Ewing is going to take over it because uh, Jason Aaron's probably going to use that to soft pilot something new with Thor mm-hmm. because Jason Aaron has been the like go-to guy knocking out of the park left and right with Thor for a while now. So uh, we'll see what they do with that. All of those events, or all three of those events, are going to culminate in a big mystery Marvel event to hit December this year. I remember when Marvel said they weren't going to do, do as a many bunch events. of events. I mean, in fairness, like none of these events are like world events. So, except mm-hmm. for the one coming up in <laughs> December, uh, which it's been more than a year since we've had like a big world event. Yeah. Like we've just had like little mini events that happen inside books, which comic books do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> do I not like comics as much as I thought I did? Like, I don't know, man. Maybe that's why I haven't read anything in like three months. I need you to read Batman so bad. Especially there's a Batman annual. You're going to want to skip it, but you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just need to figure out where it lands. Because uh, that's my problem with annuals is I never rem- like. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they kind of do. This one doesn't matter at all. Okay, that's good. Uh, you know, like, I, I think I read it between like 60 and 61 or something like that's that. That's one but. of the things that I hate that comics sometimes do is they put the end of a huge arc in the annual. Yeah, this one, they like it has it is not related to... like it's, There are certain things... Is it going to make it, me cry like that one? No. Oh, you're a lying <laughs> person. Definitely lying won't. person. I didn't almost snap you just like... I'm not crying, you're not crying, but I didn't want to spoil it. That's what uh, I'm for, right? I mean, I knew there was going to be one. It, there was going to be some moment because that – I don't even remember what it was in that last annual that got us oh, real bad. Uh, wasn't the last annual the wedding one? No. Or no, that was – No, that no, that was the one where it was before the wedding happened, quote, unquote, and it was the uh, the future Yeah, where they grew old together. 
They they basically oh, they uh, they moving on moving on next story. I don't want to dwell on it. It's going to mess with me. They went full up on us, y'all. No. Why? Don't even mention that movie on this show. <laughs> oh. uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> she got some... December 2019 is when we're getting okay? that big mystery event from Marvel, uh, and we don't know anything about it other than yeah, big event coming. Like it's probably going to do a bunch of stuff. Oh, is this where they're going to cancel all the comics? Yeah, because Marvel's can't uh, D- Disney's closing DC. Yeah, uh, Disney Marvel. Disney's shuttering Marvel, so this is going to be yeah. the end of Marvel. All those characters are going to die and uh, never be heard from again. I mean, that'd be kind of like imagine if that just like book comes out in February and just like everyone's dead. Just like wait, what? What? <laughs> Every hero gone. Uh, yeah, no, that would be. And then the Fantastic Four kid wakes up. It's like I had a terrible dream. Oh, you cowards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could absolutely see that too. All right, next portion of our podcast brought to you by our friends Josh and Allen of Press Start to Join. You can find all of their content, including their social media links, at ps2jshow.com. I got from Josh the next History of Gaming episode. The last Wednesday of every month is their History of Gaming stuff, so which will be this coming Wednesday. Devil May Cry. Oh, you poor babies. <laughs> Why would you do that to yourselves? Yeah, that's you might as well be... do Kingdom Hearts. <gasps> I mean, Kingdom... no, I have asked Josh multiple times for that one. Kingdom Hearts is significantly like Devil May Cry is. Uh, it's out there. It's all over the place. It's real confusing. Kingdom Hearts is just like. I mean, I feel like they were throwing darts at plot lines and just grabbing whatever it landed on. It makes sense if you pay attention to yeah, it. Yeah, so does Devil May Cry. So well, I mean, it's in the same it's, wellhouse. As long as you ignore DMC, they ain't gonna. <laughs> you see, yeah, they're that, good at it. That uh, they that, are really good at those episodes. That weird reboot, uh, kind of like th- the the reboot that didn't actually reboot. That's not a reboot. Mm-hmm. That may have changed some things in the main storyline. That I honestly kind of want to hear their uh, their take on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, Devil May Cry is an awesome like. Like I, game I, series, I really want to play a, five. I do too. I, the, I need a used copy to come in. So one of the guys in. from uh, Respawn Aim Fire, which is another podcast that I've started listening to that I really, really like. Shout out to uh, to them. Uh, he was talking about Devil May Cry Five. I was like, I really wanted to play that one. Yeah. Brian Pillman Jr. beat it. Oh, did he? Because that's why he told me he didn't beat Kingdom Hearts Three yet. <laughs> <laughs> so he was playing Devil May Cry. Yeah. I want to play that game. Uh, uh, all right. Moving on to actual uh, nerd stuff. So uh, we finally got our stuff from Google. Uh, we've been, you know, they've been teasing it for a mm-hmm. while now. It's called Google Stadia. It's not actually a console. Uh, the idea is that you can stream uh, actual PC games or like games in general straight to any device with an internet connection, like and a web browser. Internet oh, that's going to be awful. Screen. Yeah, internet well, connection. The difference on uh, have you seen any of it? Like no. any of the announcements? So the difference with it though is instead of it going through like they describe it in a way that it this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And for where we live, I don't think it's gonna work as well as they're hoping for. This is very much for major cities, cities. with crazy internet. Mm. Um, but you are actually directly communicating with Google servers. Okay. You're not actually like they talk about like not going through your internet, but it does, of course, require your yeah. internet. Um, so instead of it having to communicate through like you to your internet service provider to their internet service host to the servers and then back, you're going straight from your input straight into their giant Google probably just bought out all of Wyoming's, <laughs> uh, and that's where their server farm is. Uh and there's a bunch of other like crazy features with it, like for streamers and stuff. Like, yeah, if you like, if I'm watching Jesse uh, play a game and he has his settings open, like if he's playing, uh, they showed like NBA 2K. I can then like join up and be like next. So like we will play against it. Like I'll just oh, be the next person to play on the stream. That's kind of cool. Um, you can uh, your virtual or if he sets, quarters. <laughs> yeah, or if he sets, or if he sets up like a like if he's doing a scare. Like they talked about like uh, people like Markiplier or PewDiePie or whoever who do like scary gameplays. Yeah. Like oh hey so this is the part of the game I'm on. You can just load in directly into this part. There's yeah. a whole lot of potential here, and there there's a whole lot of talk about what they want to do. But, but then, will it be executed? But then Google Glass is also a thing. And yeah. Google Plus. And like, so I'm, it could be real interesting. Um, they also announced a controller uh, that you can get that's totally going to have a 
Google I Spy microphone in it. Yeah, uh, like it but actually hey, guys, said, it's got the Konami code on the back, so <laughs> yeah, gamers. <laughs> it has the uh, the uh, the Google Assistant built into it. Okay. Uh, which I know Shannon likes because uh, he's got the the Nvidia Shield with that uh, setup going. Uh, but either way, yeah, it's gonna have. And the way the remote works actually is kind of cool. It is significantly better looking than uh, the leaks we got, which we knew it was going to. Yeah, well, like it had to because the leaks we got were just based on like so uh, like a certain amount of data. But the uh, oh, it's Calvin. I was, was like, who on earth <laughs> just came in here? I'm assuming he's here to get a switch. Yeah, uh, we stole your Joy Cons. Anyway, we're not giving them back. So it. it now I'm trying to remember the oh yeah the controller yeah mm-hmm. basically what we the leaks we had were based on like some blueprint information or like or the the, the patent, patent information yeah. Uh, yeah the actual controller itself looks a lot better it's it looks almost like a PS4 controller it's like if uh, the, if they did an Xbox One controller but did the PS4 joystick layout okay and the PS4 handles yeah they're a little uh, bit longer and so then, it's yeah. a weird hybrid but instead of yeah. having the like touch skirt touch bar uh-huh. that's gone it's just the Google Stadia. But it still has so like it's the best of both worlds, kind of, and then it's got the start and stop, and then two other buttons. Okay, which those two other buttons are like those some of those like streaming features and yep. like your self destruct. <laughs> and the real cool thing about the controller, like it hooks straight up to uh, your router. Okay, like it 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 hooks up Wi Fi, so it sends the signal. It's supposed to be a little bit quicker. Mm-hmm. You can use the way they made it look, like you can use like you know an Xbox controller, or whatever you have yeah. laying around. Uh, it'll accept all of those, uh, a like Bluetooth controller up to your phone, whatever. But yeah, the idea is that you're going to be streaming uh, high speed. You're going to be streaming high quality games to anything with internet connection and a stream or and and, and, uh, and a screen. Which like it's not that's not exactly new ground. Like isn't Nvidia kind of like that? Yeah, Nvidia has some features that are kind of similar to that. And we've been talked about like the Xbox Azure program. Um, Google had the beta test this past holiday season where yep. you could play Assassin's Creed over and, it, um, and apparently that worked like super really well. well. Like, yeah, because a lot of people, a lot of people are really concerned about like what latency is going to be. Mm-hmm. So like you know, competitive, like you're not going to have like a Smash tournament or something like this, or yeah, like this a fighting is, game tournament. Yeah, right. This is not going to like even like first person shooters. This is not going to take a like a huge seat in the competitive arena mm-hmm. uh, like competitive games you're still going to want to like if you want to play games competitively you're going to want to have hardwired con- an actual console in front of you uh, but i mean it's still really cool the only like I, I i like this idea and i think it's really cool i am worried that it's the beginning of a little bit of a, a slippery slope into like other companies doing this because I know Xbox is working on X Cloud, mm-hmm. which is going to do exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything with an internet connection and a screen, you can hook up your Xbox Live account and play and stream games to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like like I like the idea; it's really cool. It helps like a lot of people get in on some games that they otherwise couldn't. Uh, I'm really worried about the marketplace on it because you buy these games, like you buy a license to play these games. And unlike you know a digital game where you download the game to your system, you, you have the game files. If like something happens to that server, or if they just decide you can't play this game anymore, it's just gone. Like yeah. they can just take that away from you. If you've sunk all this money into Google Stadia, they decide it's not worth the time, effort, bandwidth that's putting into it, and they just shutter it. Nothing. Yeah, you like have, if, you have a controller that is, can't do anything. Yep, especially if you're paying if you sixty dollars per game. Well, and like, the, see, and that's the thing is, th- this announcement honestly for me like was very underwhelming in the sense that it didn't give me the information that I was really hoping we would get. Yeah, uh, we don't know the 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 marketplace at all. Is this going to be a strictly subscription based service? Or are you going to have to pay a subscription fee as well as buy the games? There's so many, and like you know, what are the internet requirements gonna mm-hmm. be? Um, which I know there was something that was announced for like if you're wanting to stream 4K, because that's the other thing is you'll be able to sh- stream 4K, 10, uh, 4K eventually. Like they're wanting to do 4K, 60 <laughs> frames, per 60 second. frames per second, and then it's but it's also scalable. So whenever 8K becomes the standard, it though they won't have to do anything. It'll just be ready to go to stream in 8K. Yep. Yeah. So which is you know very you know future proofing their own service and stuff but it's just that like how much is that going to cost like is it going to be is it going to be a more expensive one if you are wanting to stream in 4k like netflix yep uh are you how is it you know what is the library even going to be because they also announced like there's a new game studio a first party studio being headed by jade raymond which is super cool Mm. um but yeah there's 
and they but they said it's coming this year uh and then they said that we'll get more information over the summer which could be e3 but that's where they're really going to need to kind of like went over some hearts and minds with yeah. pricing because that i i think that the pricing is going to need to be very generous especially initially to get people like us and you know people who are not in just like los angeles new york with fiber or because even like the google fiber kind of is not really a thing they're expanding on anymore you yeah, have I mean, they the, have been. It's just like it's happening so slowly. It's slowed down significantly, though. Yeah, because like, you used to hear about it. It's going everywhere, and now all of a sudden, it's just like yeah, they're trying to get in other places. Which, granted, that's not necessarily through their like any fault of their own. That's other ISPs and local places just kind of yeah. being shady. Because spoiler alert, folks: the internet services in America are third world. Essentially, yeah, we are way behind the ball here. Yeah, no, like if you if you compare like internet in the United States, it's nowhere near on par with uh, the rest of the developed world. Yeah, which is just baffling. In, yeah, no, it's not baffling. I infuriating. It, infuriating is that like whenever you have like this is why monopolies are bad. Mm-hmm. Like we have we have localized monopolies. Like we have basically a mafia. They have no they have no competitions. So they have no reason to improve. We didn't start seeing like Google Fiber was the first time we started seeing like improved speeds at any sort of like rate and, and in the last decade. Like the places that have the speed and the good enough internet to handle it, a lot of those places have data caps. Mm-hmm. Which granted, apparently, like someone I saw someone talking about this where uh, streaming a game really won't be similar as like streaming a movie. Like, or it'll be it'll be roughly the same amount of data yeah. used. It's not going to be you know because you are just streaming video. Like you're streaming like you're uploading input and downloading video, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't know. This this it seems like it could be really really cool. And if it's if they do something like Xbox Game Pass, you pay fifteen dollars a month and you have access to like a library of games. Mm-hmm. Like, I would be fine with that. I do not at all like the idea of you paying for full release titles yeah. mm-hmm. that yeah, you no. don't have. Like, I'm already, like, uh, a kind of, like, on the fence on digital games where it's, like, I don't own the physical copy of the disc. Like, I just, I own the rights to play the game, basically. Uh-huh. Uh, like but I, yeah, you're still paying the exact same price that you would for a disc. Right. Like, you, you know, nowadays, like, I'm like, okay, that's it's really convenient to do, like, digital copy, stuff like that. But I'm still, like, I'm kind of, like, wary about that. If I'm paying $60 for a game that I own no part of, where, like, I couldn't even, you know, crack later on. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I just have access to, like, I have access to the game for as long as they will allow me to have access to the game. Right. Yeah. Uh, whereas stuff like, it, it, it opens up a door where you could be buying, like, year-long licenses to games. So it's like Call of Duty. Like, you know, you, you end up buying, like, a, an annual license to Call of Duty like you do with, like, an iPhone. Mm-hmm. Like you pay a plan where you pay so much, and then it's just like, yeah, Call of Duty every year. Which, like, and it's been it, like this is kind of the biggest step forward towards that. But we've we've kind of been working our way there, even like in the like PS3 360 era, because there are games that yeah, all the data was on the disc, but the servers have long been since been shut down. Yeah, yeah. So it's just you have a disc that or like Grand Theft Auto Four. Whenever it was like a year ago, I learned this through Press Start to Join. Oh, they got rid of all the music. It got rid of yeah. like almost all the music because they lost the licensing to it. And yep. It's just like, well, what part do I own of the game then? If you yeah. like, because in theory, all that music should be on there as long as I have the disc because I own the disc. Right. But the in way practice, that, in practice. No yeah. music in the car. Yeah. No, like, and like, that's the kind of stuff that can happen. Like, what happens when they lose the right to stream the game? Mm-hmm. Then, or they lose those licenses, then I just, I'm out 60 bucks. Like, yeah. whatever much I paid for it. Like, obviously, the game wouldn't be worth that much then. But, yeah, then I'm just out But you out still of it. paid it. It's the same thing whenever they took uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance and uh, Ultimate 2. Like, they just took it off the store. Thankfully. Yeah, I'd already bought it. We already owned it, and they didn't take it away from us. Because man, that would have sucked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah, no, I I would have raised hell at that point. I've been like, I uh, want my sixty dollars back, and, and none of this like tweeting nonsense. No, I'm going to I'm going to <laughs> homes. <laughs> I mean, I'll call uh, the service man. Like, yo, because they're usually pretty. No, they can't do anything. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll move past this a little bit. Yeah, like tentatively, this could be cool. Like mm-hmm. that's that's the end of it. Like streaming service. Could be really, really neat. Not, nothing. It, it was nothing for me, at least, like super ground. No ground shattering or shattering. 
No, like it was basically just Google's like we're trying this thing that other companies haven't had the resources to really pull off. Right. Uh, Which so, between Google and Microsoft, like if you're going to tell me two tech companies are going to get into this market, like those would be the two that uh, yes. seem like they would have that infrastructure. Absolutely. Although now there's rumors of like Amazon and Walmart wanting to get in on it too, oh which God, no please. Yeah, get away from that. Of course they do. Uh, yeah. Honestly, like Microsoft I should and Google be, evil enough as it is. Like I don't need. I mean, like no. I, if they want to make their own services, I should be happy about that because competition can only help. Right. But I it just depends on how, I guess how they do it. Either way, uh, PlayStation. Speaking of digital titles, you can no, like, as of April 1st, you will no longer be able to buy digital titles for PlayStation from retailers. Mm-hmm. You can only buy it through PSN. This came from Wario64. Someone from GameStop actually leaked a uh, an email, email about it. And it's not even it, but the part of that email was very clearly just like no longer like not just GameStop. This is going to be like all retailers. There's a couple weird exceptions like with Mortal Kombat was one of them and like something else but uh, yeah, this is just kind of a weird. It's a weird announcement move. to make. Like, well, it, like because it wasn't really an announcement. Like, this well, was just yeah, a, so this was just an email sent to GameStop of like, saying, hey, hey, so by the way, after April first, you're not going to be able to sell the only PS4 games you will be able to sell are the physical copies. And I'm sure Best Buy and like Amazon and stuff like that have gotten like similar correspondence, like in their employees that just obviously didn't leak out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but you mean GameStop was the one that fumbled the ball on that one? Yeah, I mean, man, I worked there. Like, if I saw a picture of like some neat stuff, like I. I was unfortunately never the first person to see it, but I absolutely would have put it online, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, because like, like, some of those emails con- or contained some really interesting news. Uh, anyway, the uh, nothing at GameStop ever stayed a secret. They had, like whatever they announced stuff at a GameStop conference, it was done by the time they were done with the conference. Yeah. It was just out there. Uh, so anyway, moving moving back on topic here with uh, yeah, it's it's kind of unfortunate just because. PlayStation Network, like, they do run sales occasionally, mm-hmm. but, like, that's how I got that uh, Super Collector's Edition of Battleborn super cheap. It's from Amazon. Like, it wasn't mm-hmm. from, you know, PlayStation Network. So, yeah, I don't know. I, this move doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, like, it, it does. I feel like there's no harm for PlayStation letting other de- or other retailers put the stuff out there. The only thing I can think that it is is that they just want to make sure they have all of the rights to that, where it's like, all right, you can go to Best Buy and get a $60 PlayStation Network uh, currency card. You can go do that, but you have to come back to us to buy it. Uh, I think like it makes sense to me only because it kind of streamlines the whole process, where it's just like, all right, put this money on your account, buy the game. I think it's more, to me, I think it's more of a, they want people in their marketplace. Yeah. They don't want you to go to GameStop and see, oh, well, there's a Funko Pop. Like, they don't want to see mm. you get, make those impulse purchases somewhere else. Whereas if you're going to, P- like, okay, I want to pick up uh, Devil May Cry 5, but I want to get a digital. I'll just go to the PSN store and then see, oh, they are running a sale right now on, you know, whatever. Yeah, and they're going to throw that in my cart, too. I think that's it's more of that. Now they're not having to worry about cutting anyone else in on any of those potential things yeah i i don't know it's it seems weird to me because i know like people would because people could still buy those currency cards so it doesn't like it's not like it changes a whole lot no uh it's, it's just like i don't know i i don't i don't i don't get it i guess i would be curious also to see how many f- digital copies were like how many of those codes were actually bought at a physical store I, Cause I because think, of trade-ins, uh, it happens more than you think. Oh, uh, that's fair. Uh, because people will want, like, and most of the time whenever I worked there, it was like they couldn't get an actual collector's edition because they were sold out. Mm-hmm. So they would get the digital collector's edition so they could still get some pretty neat stuff. Mm-hmm. And they would trade their games in towards it. So, But, yeah, no, I mean, I imagine it's still not, like, that much. That's fair. But trade-ins definitely are the, the reasoning behind it. But you can still trade in towards points cards. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. You just can't get pre-order bonuses now from those stores. Uh, so like if you wanted if you want the digital version, you trade in some games towards it, so you can get a little bit cheaper. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I guess you could still buy the you just won't get promos like because you could still buy the points cards. Yeah, uh, and then pre order it through PSN. I don't know. It's it's weird. It's a it's weird. It's getting move. complicated. It's a weird move. I don't get it. Uh, something I do get, and something that I am really excited about, and I'm gonna buy again. We talked about it last week. They kind of teased it. Castle Crashers remastered, officially coming to Switch and PS4. 
Uh, this will be a remastered version of the game. It's coming. That's such I'm going to buy it again. It's such a perfect game for the Switch. It is. I think we'll finally have a game where we, we're going to couch co-op something. Yes. Uh, and it's going to be cool. Like, I'm so excited about this game because I, I love it Did so Did we get much. a release date? Uh, no. Okay. No, of course not. Uh, we did get a release date for Cuphead coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, coming to April 18th. That not is like so 2020. Hey. Mm-hmm. I mean, like three weeks from now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we got we got that one coming up April eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Uh, Konami has announced uh, several collections coming up for the Switch, the PS four, the Xbox One, and the PC. Oh, you said you had something with Cuphead. Yep, and I uh, already forgot the name of it. Oh, so that was the first announcement at the uh, the Nindies. The, the Nindies. Um, that was like the that was the what they started the presentation with. Uh, the other game that I'm super excited for is called uh, Katana Zero, and it looks. Very like side scrolly Hotline Miami, ooh. But sides, but like a side scroller. Yeah. Um, it like it was a good showcase. The Nindies was overall. So like I would, and it's and it's only like fifteen twenty minutes. Like it's not very yeah. long. I completely forgot to go back and rewatch it, uh, or go back and watch it rather, because uh, I wasn't paying attention when it actually happened. Yeah, but uh, so I mean, it's I think it's worth checking out. Like I said, there wasn't a whole lot that like I was super pumped about, or like was super, uh. I, I, super revolutionary for me, mm. but um, Katana Zero looked awesome, and then they ended it with that uh, uh, rhythm dungeon crawler Zelda crossover that I'm totally. I keep wanting to say into the gungeon, and I know that's not right. Nope, I don't remember what it's called either. But yeah, like it's gonna be a crossover with Zelda. Like you've got an independent developer working on a Zelda game, which just hmm. Which that's, boy, that's not a sentence you thought you would. Yeah, no. Like I, if I had gone, if I went back five years ago and said that to myself, I'd have slapped me silly. Because that's just, it doesn't. Yeah. It's, clearly, I've gone insane. Crypt of the Necro Dancer is the name of it. Is was the name of the original game, and then the new rhythm game is called Cadence of Hyrule. Yep. So I, I, that could be really neat. Uh, so anyway, Konami they announced several collections coming out: Switch, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Uh, they got the Arcade Classics Collection coming out April 18th for 19.99. Uh, they've got the Castlevania uh, Anniversary Collection. Coming out, uh, well, it's going to be early summer, and the same thing with the Contra Anniversary Collection. We don't have an official date or price point for either of those. We also don't have the entire games list for the latter two. I do have uh, the games list for the Classics Collection. I have a few of them that are going to be on the uh, uh, Castlevania and uh, Contra. Yeah, it looks like the uh, the arcade one is going to be Haunted Castle, uh, Typhoon, Nemesis, uh, Vulcan Vulture, or Vulcan Venture, rather. Uh, and Life Force, Thundercross, Scramble, and Twin B. Uh, also, Gradius and Gradius 2 is a Nemesis and Vulcan, or Vulcan Venture, which might be a little bit more common of a title. Anyway, uh, Castlevania, we have the uh, the original NES Castlevania, Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, uh, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge, and uh, Super Castlevania 4. Uh, there's going to be four more titles on the collection. But they have not announced what they're going to be yet. Then for Contra, uh, it'll be the uh, the original arcade Contra, Super Contra Arcade Edition, Super C for the NES, Contra 3, The Alien Wars for the Super Nintendo, and once again, uh, four more that have not yet been announced. But those will all be four more Contra and Castlevania games? Yes. Okay. Yeah, specifically for yeah Contra and Castlevania. Because the first one is the arcade classics, just some old like arcade Konami yeah. games. So, you know, that'll be really cool. Uh, definitely want to grab, at least for me, the, the Castlevania collection because at least a couple of those I would like to replay. And, uh, I mean, Castlevania, it's good mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, and the last little bit of news here. Uh, I say news. It's Ace's Mortal Kombat Minute. This is news. Excuse you. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just I'm not going to be giving it. Like it's, oh, so it's, it's not the, news. If, it's the the last segment on the podcast. It's the, it's, the, it's the American Dad bit where they get the new where they get to make the announcements. <laughs> I said there would be lasagna, and they're eating lasagna. <laughs> I speak for God now. <laughs> so Asa, uh, we're a little bit over now, but hit us with your Mortal Kombat minute. Uh, they had a uh, they did their combat cast where we got it was Kotal Khan and Jackie Briggs. Both of them look really, really cool. I was not a huge fan of Cold Khan uh, in MKX. Just the way he played did not match up with my style. But they've retooled him a little bit, and he looks really awesome. Jackie Briggs has a Muay Thai-style fight to her. And so not only does she have her gauntlets, but she's got robot legs now. Ooh. Which is kind of neat. Um, 
they they did Kotal Khan dirty because they said here's the Kotal Khan trailer, but it was really a Jackie trailer. They just traded offense more than they usually do. Instead but of one like he, instead of a character getting the crap kicked out of them by the feature character, it's yeah, them kicking the crap out of each other. Essentially. Um a lot of people are now already saying like, Oh sweet, Beast Boy's gonna be an in Injustice Three because Kotal Khan turns into a Jaguar and you know they're gonna reuse that asset. <laughs> yeah. So. That's, that's, yeah, that's going to show up at some point. It's a very Nether Realm thing to do. Um, and then they also had a C two uh, C two E two. Is that that's the yeah, that was this weekend up in uh, Chicago? Yeah, the they had a panel. Chicago Comet something Expo. Yeah. Um, Toy Bomb was there. Yeah. yeah, the Chicago Comics and Entertainment Expo. That's it. I think yeah. is what it is. Um, but they had a panel there where they announced details for the beta, which I'm bummed because like I would qualify for, but I'm not going to be here to play it. Um, they announced the, the characters that will be available to play, which little underwhelming for the amount of characters that have been announced. Like you're only getting, I think six. Um, and then you're getting online versus again, a single player tower, and then like one other thing. Um, but the two big announcements are they announced the first DLC character, which again, I am not a fan of anytime any game studio announces dlc before the game's actually out i understand that they're still they're working on it he's not going to be ready for launch because they're not going to do that but still yeah no, um, it's annoying like push the game back a month then the but the the crypt is going to be on shang sung's island so shang sung is going to be the first dlc character but the coolest part is it's old man shang sung and they got the actor from the first mortal kombat movie that's nice. awesome to reprise his role as Shang Tsung, so that's, that's super cool. Um, we didn't get to, of course, we didn't get to see any gameplay. Not, like there was just like one render is all that they had to show for that. And then what we did get is another character reveal in Noob Cybot is back, and be still, my little edge lordy heart. He is <laughs> perfect. They've turned him into the Grim Reaper, but scarier. Uh, they changed his voice. Now he sounds like what a third grader thinks Satan sounds like. <laughs> <gasps> Like yeah, it's she's fu- super edgy. It's full on Doctor Claw from Inspector Gadget. Nice. <laughs> yes. Uh, the portals are back. Uh, the the ink is back. The 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 clone is back. Uh, it's just uh, he's so he looks so awesome, and I'm super excited to have him back. I missed him in MKX a lot, but he's got a little sickle now. But the fatality. That fatality is gross. Jesse. The fatality. It's so gross. It is my new favorite thing. <laughs> Just so like gross. He disembowels the per- like the person standing. He takes the sickle and just like a hard like an extra like it's extra thick. Like it feels like there's more weight behind it. Some intestines come out. He sticks his hand inside of them. And then he, mm-hmm. and then no, he s- means when he says disembowel, very literally. I mean, I heard the squishy noises and when you were watching. That it. was different. So that was a different it gets, one. It gets oh. worse. Oh, goody. So then he sends like just this black energy like inside of them. You're like, what's he doing? And then the person like shifts and does weird, lurches his head back, starts to scream, and then fingers come out of their mouth. Ew. <laughs> and the clone that he summons just then proceeds to rip himself out and breaks their body in half. Yep. To to free himself from the confines of your opponent's wow. being. Yep. No, thank you. I love it you, so much. You have fun with that. I mean, like, I'll, yeah. I'll be in the corner playing Pokemon. I'm gonna. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm gonna play the character because, like, he, he really, like, the, the little bit of the, the snippet of video that I saw, that he speaks to me as a, as a, as a, as a zoning fighting game player, mm-hmm. um, but he's, he's got some zoning tools, but he's not going to be like super zony. I think he, he looks like he's might be a little bit like uh, like a little mid. He might be more mid. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But but I don't, yeah, no, I don't need I full zone. Like I. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he's got enough. Oh, uh, but yeah, he looks amazing. Um, we also got like they gave us a little bit of a tease for the story with Sub Zero and Scorpion okay. fighting a bunch of robots, which was cool. Uh, Part of Noob's trailer showed like the Lin Kuei, um robot program, possibly. Oh, that's neat. So they had what looked like uh, Cyber Sub Zero, maybe Smoke, just kind of in the background. Yeah, because in this, like, I guess in this version of Mortal Kombat, they're making like Noob Sub Zero's brother. Well, he's he always has been. Well, because I know like Noob originally. Uh... So there's been two Sub Zeros. Mortal right. Kombat Mortal Kombat One Sub Zero died. He was killed by Scorpion. Mm-hmm. He then was res and so and then his brother took over the mantle 
of leader of the Lin Kuei and the lead and sub and the mantle of Sub Zero, or maybe it's Mortal Kombat Two. Doesn't matter. Original Sub Zero dies, is killed by Scorpion, and uh, his younger brother steps in to fill his shoes. Original Sub Zero is then resurrected by Quan Chi, yeah, and is given these new abilities, and he becomes Noob, Noob Saibot. Saibot. So that's canon. Like that's always happened. Well, like because the the first game that Noob showed up in, he was just kind of a joke. Well, he's um, he's always been one of those. Uh, like he like he originally was just like a palette swap ninja. Yeah, like same thing with like Smoke and Reptile and Mac. He, uh, he was like Rain. Like he was, I think, but he was purple. If I remember right, Rain, is Rain was. And because then, it's purple rain, and he's the prince oh, of Adenia. Oh, that's right. <laughs> mm. yeah. Kingdom Hearts is starting to make more sense, guys. No, Mortal Kombat. It's really not. Yeah. It's I can try. I guarantee you. The lore for Mortal Kombat wasn't any like anywhere near resembling consistent until uh, MK9. Whenever they just like rebooted everything, that's not it's, true at all. What do you mean that's not true? The lore has been consistent all the way through. Oh, that's not even a little bit true. I mean, they have they've had the canon endings, like the each char- yes, each character has had their own like tower ending, but not all but only like one or two of those are canon per game. I love yeah. it when Daddy and Daddy fight. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason Mortal Kombat Armageddon ended up as like the like, hey, so everything's just so bricked right now within the universe that that's what awakens Blaze and ruins everything. So yeah, MK9 and, kind of like refreshed and retold a lot of the story. Yeah, because and, well, uh, then in, it made sense. Because at the end of Armageddon, Blaze just destroys the entire universe. Raiden is like, hmm, what could have we? What could we have done to avoid this? I know. I will send an image to my past self to be like, hey, we need to avoid some things to keep this from happening. So that's why Mortal Kombat 9 has that scene where he's like, he sees all of what just happened Mm -hmm. for the previous 12 games and is like, oh, so Loon Kane shouldn't win this tournament. I should win this tournament. And then that's what happens. And that's why here we are in Mortal Kombat 11 is Raiden's playing with the timeline because he, you know, because now the, this timeline has very much split and other things have happened. Right. So now Kronika, who is the keeper of time and destiny. Yeah, is we now like, have the time cops around. He's like, hey, don't like you doing this. I'm going to get a bunch of people to kill you. Right. So now him and Cole Connor teaming up. We got the story. Oh. <laughs> no, the lore of Mortal Kombat is very, very. It may not make much sense and it may not be good, but it's consistent. <laughs> consistently off the wall anyway uh that's gonna do it for us guys i appreciate you guys sticking around and uh yeah we'll see you possibly next week uh i'm sure that kansas city i'm sure there will be a show next week asa and i may or one or both of us may or may not be on there who knows uh we'll see what happens for now later